Well, <clears throat> last Sunday, I brought you again to the most important text in the Old Testament that presented our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the language of Isaiah as the servant of Yahweh. Though in the course of my ministry I have already preached this section twice, yet I believe that believers should return to its study and be refreshed by what our Father decided to do and what it cost Him to send His servant for sinners like you and me. It will always be beneficial for our soul to once in a while to focus our heart gazing upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Martin Luther, that great reformer, said of Isaiah 52, 13 to 53, 12, every Christian ought to be able to repeat it by heart. A text that has been very central in many of the reformers concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, the most important text in the Old Testament referring to Him. And so as we consider again and bring back our minds to this portion, join me in prayer as we ask God's help in our study this afternoon. Our Heavenly Father, as we come and meditate upon and focus upon the prophetic writings of Isaiah concerning God's servant, we ask that you will continually help us. Perhaps Martin Luther is right when he said every Christian ought to be able to repeat it by heart because that is how the New Testament presented the life, the sufferings, and the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May we continually be repressed by the port, this fourth servant song as we continue what we began last Sunday. We ask this blessing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I will just be reading Isaiah 52, beginning verse 13 to 15. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was marred more than any man. And he is formed more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Cain shall shut their mouths at him. For what had not been told them, they shall see. And what they had not heard, they shall consider. The Jewish interpretation of this song started right. Identifying God's servant here in Isaiah as the Jewish promise. Messiah. However, the influential medieval Jewish interpreter Rabbi Slomo Yitzchaki, or known simply as Rachi, identified the servant as Israel. This is AD 1040 to 1105. And today, most Jewish interpreters follow Rashi, as do most critical scholars that are Christians. It has since become the dominant view in Judaism. However, as I have shown you last Sunday, any honest exegetical approach to this text clearly shows that this is an amazing prediction of precisely what would happen to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we began last Sunday meditating on the first stanza, which we just read in verses 13 to 15 of chapter 52. 
At nakita natin na ang stanza na ito ay nagsimula sa triumph of our Lord before it ever explains the cost that our Lord has to pay to bring about the triumph. Pero sinamarize that this Lord is triumphant. So ano yung natutunan natin? First of all, we, we learn that this servant of God shall be exalted and extolled and be very high which teaches us that this verse is, pre, pre, is a prediction that God's servant will deal wisely, that he will lift himself up or be lifted up, and that as a result of him being lifted up, he shall exceedingly be high or very high. Indeed, Christ's exaltation will not be universally recognized until his second coming. Ang nag-recognize lamang ng exaltation na yan ay yung mga nanampalataya sa ating Ama. But when Christ returns again, the rest of this world will bow their knees as they see that truly Jesus Christ is the exalted one. An exciting day. To see. But secondly, we also learn that this servant shall deal prudently, informing us that he would always think, say, and do the things that would lead to success, full blessing, and prosperity. You remember, I even mentioned to you, this is what gospel prosperity really is all about. It is the Messiah. Being successful in fulfilling his role as the redeemer of God's people. He will prosper because he will act wisely. Kaya ngayon yung pagkakasabi. And thirdly, we also learn God, our Father in heaven, is calling them to take a very serious, deep, Consecrated look at this servant. Behold, God servant. That is a call for those who are reading to take seriously, take a deep look, a concentrated look, if they can, at his servant. The servant that God the Father gave. Dr. David Thompson on the word Behold said, and I quote, This is God speaking, and God basically says, I want you to take a serious look now at my servant. This is God asking us to take a serious, deep look at his special servant and savior. This is God's servant. This is God's Messiah. This is God's Savior. And God says, take some time right now and take a serious look at what I have to say to you about Him right here and right now. <coughs> Dr. Thompson captured what the Hebrew text really is saying to those who read the passage. That is why Martin Luther made a simple conclusion as if saying that all of us who call ourselves Christian should have all these verses there in our heart because it is a short summary of what God said. Behold, God's servant. In closing that message, I also pointed out to you to consider what our Heavenly Father did for us in His plan to save people from their sins. He sent His servant even though, even though He knew what sinners will do to Him. He Himself will detail to us. Ang Diyos ang nagsulat nito. The Father himself will detail to you and to me 
what his servant will undergo to bring sinners to a saving relationship with him in heaven. And this is given to us beginning chapter 53. Clearly, the writer of this book is showing to us to remember that the initiative for the salvation of his people is solely the initiative of God. Mahalaga maunawaan ito because doon sa turo ng ating Panginoon sa prayer, ano yung kanyang tinuro? You pray like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. How do you hallow the name of God? How do you pray? Many, many times, whenever we think about salvation, many of God's people consecrate or their concentration is fully on the Lord Jesus Christ. But remember, even Paul, when he wrote in Ephesians chapter 1, he said, Blessed be the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he said that in the context of talking about salvation, salvation that was given, salvation that become yours, become mine, become ours, as we believe in God the Father, it was primarily the Apostle Paul who repeatedly highlighted God's initiative in procuring salvation for sinners. Kaya lang ang problema, many of us miss that point. That is why in our prayer, in our praises, the Father is almost forgotten when it comes to salvation. So what I want to do this afternoon is to prolong that thought to convince you that whenever you think about your salvation, the salvation that you now possess in prayer, in the Lord's Supper, in worshiping God, do remember all these things that I will show to you that the Apostle Paul highlighted so much in his writing. And this should be the content of how we think of our Father in heaven, how we hallow his name as we worship him, as we pray to him, as we come before him. Number one, if we go to the New Testament, Jesus, the death of Jesus, the atoning death of Jesus, is clearly mentioned by the Apostle Paul as the result of the will of our Father in heaven. The God of Israel, Yahweh, took the initiative in sending His Son into the world. Here in Isaiah, He is called God's servant. He sends His Son to enact His purposes of redemption in the course of history, inaugurating the time of salvation which He had promised. So dapat naalala natin ito as we remember Christ. He is God's Son, but it is the Father who had sent Him. And this Father, in sending Jesus Christ, Paul says, his very death on the cross was the result of the will of our God and Father. In Galatians 1.3, grace to you, says Paul, and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. In chapter 4, beginning verse 4, But when the fullness of the time had come, what happened? God, in the initiative of God, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive 
the adoptions of sons. You see, Paul used the Aries Greek tense for the verb sent forth. Diba? Ilang beses dyan narinig. The Aries sent is almost the equivalent of the past tense in English, but not exactly. But here, he wants us to understand that God's initiative in sending His Son was a one-time historical act. The Diyos mismo ang gumawa, ang Ama mismo. And the historical particularity of God's action dito ay kitang-kita mo. Nung si Jesus ay finally inintroduced dito sa mundo through His birth as a human being and as a Jewish man who had been obeying His Father's will. Sinasabi ni Jesus na nung namuhay siya dito sa mundo, nagpapatuto siya na ang tanging ginagawa niya ay mga bagay na tinawag niyang kalooban ng kanyang ama na nasa langit. So doon, tayo ay nagpupuri at nagpapasalamat sa ating Diyos. Huwag naisip natin, bakit naparito? Bakit ipinanganak? A brother Perry has started reading for us Matthew. Di ko alam kung itidere-derecho niya yun, but that is the encounter. Jesus, this, this son that was given by God as a gift solely by His sovereign power in Mary's womb, you see, was the initiative of God. The same language is being used in terms of God's initiative in giving to us the Holy Spirit. And so that son, sabi nung angel in a prophetic statement, sabi niya kay Joseph, ano? You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. At God's initiative, the time has come. Who set the time? It's still the Father. The time of the Gentiles had come, and finally, the Father sent his Son. For what purpose? That he might deliver us. From this present evil age. And this is sabi doon sa Galatians 1.3 According to the will of our God and Father. This is His will. No one can ever change what God has decreed. What God has willed. Secondly, makikita rin natin sa writing ni Apostle Paul yung assertion that God destined us for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ in 1 Thessalonians 5.9 emphasizing God's initiative highlighting kung ano yung primary role Nang Ama, in guaranteeing believers in Jesus' salvation on the day of judgment. Kasi ang context nito, eh natatakot yung ibang mga mananampalataya. Na baka sa dulo ng panahon, masumpungan nila, na nasa ilalim pa rin sila ng poot ng Diyos. They, they remain to be under the wrath of God. So what will happen to us? Ang sagot ni Pablo sa first sa first Thessalonians 5 for God did not appoint us talking to the believers in Thessalonica to wrath he did not but ano yung appointment natin to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us that whether we wake or sleep we should live together with Him. Kasi nga, kinakabahan din sila. Namatay na yung mga mahal nila sa buhay. Namatay na yung ibang mga kristyanong kabilang doon sa membership ng Thessalonica. Hindi lang sila kinakabahan na sa pagbabalik ng Panginoon, baka hindi sila mag-rise from the dead. They were fearful 
because actually their fear is rooted from the wrath of God. If the wrath of God remains upon you, you will be dead in your sin. Pero sinabi dito, emphasizing God's initiative, highlighting His primary role. Yun ang ginawa ni Paul to pacify that heart that is so fearful and worried. Buru's heart, a medical doctor says, this is actually, sabi niya, in answer to the question, how does salvation give us confidence in the face of God's wrath? Something that some of the Thessalonians believers were fearful that they might experience. Simply lang, yung sabot ni Paul. God did not appoint us to wrath. Our salvation proceeds from God's appointment. And is connected with the past act. Sabi sa Ephesians, di ba? Even before the foundation of this earth. Sinecure na ito ng Ama. With deliberate purpose done by a merciful and gracious God. Very interesting sa Greek ito, mga kapatid, because sa Greek po may voice, tense voice. The voice is middle voice, parang he himself, mga ganon, you yourself, sa English. But the middle voice in Greek indicates that God thus acted in his own interest. He did this upon his own interest. Tapos may Aries tense, middle voice, Aries tense, indicate this event occurred in the past. And you are to view it, pag Aries kasi, you have to view the kind of action as something God has completed. Completed na yung act. So imagine mo, kung babalikan mo yung sa vision, completed na yung act na yun. Yung plinano ng Diyos na yun. So ba't kayo mag-aalala? Ba't ka matatakot? Sa wrath ng God. Totoo, God's wrath will fall upon those who are not in Christ. But if you say you are in Christ, it has no longer any attack on you because God Himself, according to His own interest, made an action that that will not befall you, that that wrath will no longer have any effect upon you. Parang yung so Romans 8.1 There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. And that is the initiative of God. God who acted according to His own will and good pleasure has destined you to salvation. And that is His gracious intention which He decided Himself. Wala po nag-influence sa kanya. Wala po nag sa kanya. Siya lamang. What a blessing. And this is a cause for rejoicing for all of us because believers do not have an appointment with God's wrath. Wala na tayong appointment na hinanda. Di ba appointment? Di pa nangyayari. Wala na tayong appointment with God's wrath when you die. But if you are not in Christ, you still do not believe that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That no man can come to God except through Him. That is your appointment after death. Judgment. But those who are in Christ should not fear after death, the judgment, because in that judgment, God will say to you, the wrath of God is no longer there. Who decided that? Who planned that? Who initiated all of this that has become your benefit, 
and should be your assurance, should be your peace. That, that appointment to rat when we die is no longer with us. It's God the Father. And so when you think about no longer having an appointment such as that, you must think about God and what God has done. Not only what Jesus Christ did on the cross, which is also true, but do not forget God the Father. You will see in the writing of the Apostle Paul, he never forgot the Father. You will always talk about the Father and the Son. Thirdly, doon sa first letter ni Pablo sa mga taga Corinth, Paul pointed out God's faithfulness and His initiative in calling people into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ. And it is there that he described what happens in conversion to faith in Jesus. Eh kung isipin mo, Ang laki ng problema ng Corinthian Church. In 1 Corinthians 1.9, God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Bakit tayo may fellowship with His Son? At bakit nananatili ito samantalang ang gulo na ng buhay ng church? Sabi ni Pablo, it's not because you are faithful. It is God who is faithful. By whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son. Kung pamayaan kayo ng Diyos, lalabas, God is unfaithful. Doon sa mga tinawag niya on His own initiative. Pero faithful ang Diyos. So, umaharap sa mabigat na sitwasyon yung mga mananampalataya sa Corinth, God is not abandoning them in their sin. That's why Paul, kahit mahirap, is addressing them. And similarly, Paul asserts that God decided, it was God who decided, that through the foolishness of our proclamation, he will be saving sinners. So tanggalin nyo na para maging successful ang church sa kanyang evangelism, kailangan natin ng mga theologian. Kailangan natin yung mga Bible men and women. O maging insecure kayo, sabihin nyo, uh, nag-iisip tayo ng track distribution na ganyan. Eh, hindi ako marunong dyan, hindi ako ano dyan. Because there is already a decision that God made that through the foolishness of our proclamation, eh, masisay. Eh, bakit ganyan, pastor? Kasi meron na rin decision ng Panginoon that was made. Ano ba yung isang decision that will affect that? May parallel statement that God chose the people with little or no education that God chose the people who have no power or influence in our society, that God chose the law and despise to be His people. Oh, eh kung ang pinili ng Diyos na ito, mga common ano, eh di siyempre, God has decided also na kung hang, ano yung kaya natin, yun ang gagamitin niya in saving people. So we can go. You can go. You can join. Kung may magtanong, trust God. Hindi mo kailangan ng papani mga tanong nila, baka sobrang hira, parang ano. Sabi nga ng isang nabasa po, give them Jesus. When you go out, give them Jesus Christ. Because that is what God gave into this world. He gave us His only begotten Son para kung ikaw maniwala, maligtas ka. 
Ang sabi niya, give them Jesus. There's a sense in what he said. You need not be fearful because this is the initiative of God. Many that are getting saved. Eh dito, wala naman tayong scientists. Sa Reformed Baptist Church, circus, ilan lang ang scientists na alam natin. Ang pinakakilala si Pastor Rodel Lasco. Known in this, not only in the Philippines, but in other countries. He's a genuine scientist. A multi-awarded scientist. Pero hindi lahat ganun. Kaya isa-isa ka eh. Eh yung iba, sayang daw. <laughs> sayang tis. <laughs> sayang yung pag-aaral nila. <laughs> Kasi hindi na naging sayang tis. Panay-aaral. Di ba? But that is God's decision. So, ba't ka may insecure na hindi ka kasintalino? Ba't ka may insecure na yung pastor niyo hindi kasing galing ng iba? Nandun ba yun? No? You just have to read scriptures. 1 Corinthians 1.27 But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in His presence. But of Him you are as in Christ, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, that as it is written, He who glory, let Him glory in the Lord. Sabi nga ni Pastor, capital L-O-R-D. Alam niyo na, anong ibig sabihin, hindi ko napapaliwanan. Glory in Him. Glory in the Lord. And Paul also explains what happens in conversion by pointing to the fact that God, the Creator, has shown in our hearts, has shown in our hearts to illuminate them with the knowledge of God's glory, shining in the face of Christ. Hindi ito sa galing mo. It is again the initiative of God. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It's God. If anyone will be saved, whether we use the track, whether we use a Bible study evangelistically, whether kung ano man yung gamitin natin, it's not that. Paul says, it's God who commanded light. To shine out of darkness. The creator God. Who simply by his word. From nothing something came up. So. Hindi ka magiging hopeless. Diba? Hindi ka mamimiling tao. Ito. Hindi mo kang masisigto. <laughs> Sayang tong truck. <laughs> ah, ito. Mukhang masisigto. Ibibigay ko to. Ano? <coughs> no. No. Our confidence in God. Everything has God doing the first things. Oh, hindi tayo pwede maging tamad. We have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Pero why do we work out? Sabi ni Pablo, because God has been doing something. Now, na lang kumikilos ang Panginoon. O sasabihin mo natin, huwag na, na, na yan, trucks, bakta, wala naman naliligtas dyan. We're not saying trucks ang nakakaligtas, o tatayo ka dyan, yun yung magliligtas. O yung Bible study mo, e Bible study na lang natin. Dyan sigurado may maliligtas. No. It's not in the mean. Linaw, linaw. It is, for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness who has shown in our heart to give the light of the knowledge 
of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Fourthly, Paul again highlights God's initiative in salvation when he asserts that God proved his love for us while we were yet what? Sinner. So you know that. You know that. Romans 5, verse 6, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good one, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath. Truly. That's our confidence. It's the decision of God. And when God decided that, we were sinners. So, in practical Christian living, that's how. And that should how we operate as a church. Kaya ngayon mga pinag-aaralan natin, alas dalawang buwan na tayo pinag-aaral nung sa Sunday School natin nung forgiveness, the issue of forgiveness. Whether yung private sa Diyos, nagkakasala tayo, whether sa isa't isa, or sa pastor, ang issue, God has given to us what we should be doing with a guarantee that if we do His will, He would be pleased. Not our will, not our way, but His way. Let us put confidence in that because that is what will be victorious and effective before God. Diba? Hindi naman result yung, di ba may gano'n sa, ano, sa trabaho, di ba? Uh, kahit di ka pumasok, basta maproduce mo yung result. But God has given us a process that we should follow and obey. God has given us words that we must obey. If we do that before God, we are the most obedient. Because He is the one who causes what the results are. It's not in our hands. It's not in our methodology. Some Calvinists are very Armenian. Practically. Kaya nga nakakalungkot. You say yourself, Armenian, be consistent. Because the Bible is very consistent. In saying that, it is in the hands of God. And all you have to do is to trust Him. And if you trust Him, this is God's will. This is what God wants you to do. This is the process that God wants you to undergo. Undergo it. And trust Him. If God wants you as a Christian to live in poverty the rest of your life until Jesus Christ returns, you need not worry because this same God said and promised to you that the basic necessities of life, you need not worry. He will give it to you. But if your heart is so covetous and it was not destroyed by conversion, that's why the Bible says covetousness is what? Idolatry. That's the basic teaching of the scripture. If you are covetous, you are idolatrous. God is not your God. You have another God. Contentment rests so much upon belief that God is sovereign. That He does whatever He pleases. Yes, you can pray. I will always remember that prayer. In Proverbs, do not make me like what? This is uh, not word by word. Huwag mo akong gawing masyadong mahirap, Panginoon, kasi baka umangal ako. Huwag mo rin akong gawing masyadong mayaman, Panginoon, baka makalimutan ko kayo. Anong gagawin sa'yo? 
ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ವಾಯ್ ಅನ್ನು ಸಾಧ್ಯ ನಾನು ಲೋಡ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೇ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ಲೋಡ್ ಗಿವ್ ಮೀ ಮೈ ಡೈಲಿ ಬ್ರೆಡ್ ಡೈಲಿ ವಾಯ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಈವೆನ್ ನೋ ವೆದರ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅ ಲೈಫ್ ಟು ಮೂರ್ ಕೈ ಆ ಪಿನಕೀತ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ದ ಫೂಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಐಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಯು ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫ್ಯೂಚರ್ ಬಟ್ ದೋಸ್ ಯು ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಇನ್ ಗಾಡ್ believe in him and because they believe in him when god told them to pray every day they pray every day give us our daily bread and so we say to the lord give us our daily bread and our daily bread is not only the physical food that we eat don't make it equal it is not and lastly the initiative of god in procuring salvation through the crucified and risen and risen jesus is the mystery that paul repeatedly referenced alala nya mystery diba in first corinthians 2:7 but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery the hidden wisdom which god of ordained before the ages for our glory ba huh? it even became part of the benediction yung wisdom niya nang dios sabi ni paul sa roman 16 now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ you see who will be able to establish that the gospel the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began but now has been made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures has been made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting god for obedience to the faith to god alone wise be glory through jesus christ forever amen in colossians 1 verse 24 i now rejoice in my sufferings for you says paul and fill up in my place what is lacking the afflictions of christ for the sake of his body which is the church of which i became a minister according to the stewardship from God which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations but now has been revealed to his saints in chapter 4 of the same book continue earnestly in praying being vigilant in it with thanksgiving meanwhile praying also for us that god would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of christ for which i am also in chains that i may make it manifest as i ought to speak ano ba yung mystery hindi to secret teachings known lang ng mga select teacher it is talking about the initiative of god and through his initiative plan the salvation that we are now enjoying he revealed it to paul and the apostle they proclaimed the message of that plan relying upon god fulfilling his promises both for israel and the gentiles through the crucified and risen jesus christ whose death on the cross procures salvation for them but jew and yeah, there is no salvation under heaven wala iba except jesus whether the salvation needed by jew or the salvation needed by gentiles so in closing it is my hope and prayer that this will help you every time you think of salvation 
the salvation which you received through the many sacrifices offered by Jesus Christ, that you will not forget that it is only ours because of the love, the grace, the mercy, the sovereign plan of our Heavenly Father. And this Heavenly Father decided to extend that love, that mercy to you, to me. That is why we believe. As I have mentioned to you, undeserving as we are, God knows. And God nevertheless decided to save. He said what? Jesus Christ to save the ungodly. Christ died for sinners like you and me. Never forget to give thanks to the Father because even today, the Father is continually moving. May we always remember that what we learn and be able to say with the Apostle Paul, from our heart, blessed be or blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And we do it whenever we think of our own salvation, the salvation that we study continually as we gather together, the salvation that we proclaim to those that are outside of our church. Let us not forget. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because He is the one who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. May God use this study to cause us to always remember Him, to always hallow His name because of the great things He has done for us. Tayo po ay manalangin. Panginoon, kami po ay lubos na nagpapasalamat sa inyo sa katotohanang patuloy po ninyong inidiin sa aming puso't isipan. And we confess before you, Lord, that there are times that we have totally failed to recognize you as our Father and the initiative you have done in bringing about this salvation that is only found in Christ and in Him alone. May this study, Lord, enable us to learn to fully appreciate <coughs> what you have done for us as well as what Jesus Christ in obedience to you fulfilled so that we who believe will enjoy the salvation that now we have the freedom that we have, the forgiveness that we receive, the hope that surely will one day be fulfilled when Jesus Christ returns again. Thank you so much for reminding us again as we have been studying Isaiah. Enable us, Lord, not to be forgetful of what you have done for us in Christ Jesus. For this is our prayer in his name. Amen.